Okay. You ready for us? Yeah. yeah. Right. So, cloud stuff. It's good. It's cloudy. We had a really good. Oh, oh. I'm suddenly got louder. No, we, because you are sitting yes. So we we did have a very very productive sprint last year in Seattle, and a bunch of us went to, were, were there. Hands up, everyone who was there and taking part. Yeah. Um, and we went from, to be honest, as far as I could tell, initially as an interested observer, we went from very little actual team happening to um, discussing things, going through a lot of the common, the common ideas that we had, and actually um, coming up with some plans. That was awesome. What I'm worried that we haven't necessarily done a vast amount of in the time since then is execute very much on those plans. I'd, I'd, I would love to be corrected if people have done massive amounts of things and just carefully kept them hidden from the rest of us. I think Noah did a lot of... Yeah. I think test nights one, two. Um, Noah Meyer Hans did a lot of things for AVS. He has AWS images. Um, Noah has done a huge amount of work on. He and Kula have been working on and off on quite a lot of things around that. Um, I don't have much visibility on what work has happened around the GCE images um, since then. I just checked with uh, contact at Google in the last few moments, yeah. and apparently they're still using the same tool they were using then, Bootstrap VZ. They just updated to Debian 9. Fine. And Azure? Azure used the same um, scripts we used in the past for Debian 9 as well. OK. And so I will report, I mean, I've already mentioned this before, we carried on, we have OpenStack images built on our central image building machine, now including ARM64, goodness. Mm -hmm. Woo! That's even been tested and it works, I'm yes. told. So... Um, what, uh, Emmanuel, do you want to tell something yes. about Vagrant images? Uh, so I started to move uh, to using a FI as well, since it's a tool we agreed in the last sprint. So I will push that to FA Cloud Image. And we we'll ha we have also a test suit and um, script to automatically upload um, to the Vagrant Cloud backend. Back and so, but I'm waiting how these credentials of cloud providers will be handled from the Amazon side. So. I have some ideas how we should do it for the Vagrant side. Uh, so do you mean that we have, uh, we need to come with idea of managing AWS credentials or do we need, to, we have already some plan and we need to just execute it? Uh, I have seen there is uh, an open discussion about that. Maybe for the Google images, we had things running during the last um, cloud sprint. So the, the Phi config space is there. It worked. I think Jimmy did this work. Thank you. But yeah, so only Google has to use the tool chain. Uh, they said that they tried it, and um, it didn't yet produce a bootable stretch image, which is not something we tested. So there may be more work, but it is probably solvable. If we, it sounds like nobody has adopted it for uh, official images that Debian's producing anyway, so it, it's future work for all of us. Uh, just to clarify, Steve, uh, Azure doesn't use Bootstrap VZ. We I use the that, stack. and people are correcting me already. Oh, okay. Thank, that was a total I thinker. Think yes, yes. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, ah, and we have Kula joining us as well. Wave to the camera. Uh, <laughs> I've merged. Hmm. So I've merged the work of Waldi into the OpenStack Debian image uh, script, though the result hasn't been tested. And as I had no Azure credential, I couldn't do the test. Credentials? 
you guys need Azure accounts? If you want an Azure account, the easiest thing to do is uh, I can give you a, what used to be called an MSDN subscription. And that is, uh, it's now called Visual Studio. It doesn't really matter. It comes with like $150 of uh, Azure time that's recycled every month. And it's good for one year. So if anyone had, wants one of those, just let me know. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, sorry, uh, can we get the back? Uh, because I also first we want to talk about building images and so on, but it would also be good to talk about uh, accounts and credentials and so on yeah. because it seems like people have different people have different access to different platforms and it would. And recently we had beginnings of discussions about uh, AWS and IAM profiles, so it would be good to at least touch it. Right. And Hey, yeah, dive in. Could I speak to that? Hello. Um, if you attended the DSA BOF, uh, what we had proposed there was that with AWS at least, and maybe the other two platforms, we could do either SAML or OIDC integration so that you could use your uh, Debian credentials to authenticate against the platform. Um, we had exposed uh, LDAP groups and some group, the cloud team, whatever that is, uh, could then be authorized to manipulate those LDAP groups and those would translate into IAM roles in AWS. So that way if we happen to deactivate an account in Debian for whatever reason, they retire, they go MIA, um, their credentials in these other services since they're tied to Debian are also turned off. So this is possible. I've done it for work with IAM, uh, AWS IAM. I don't know the status of Google Cloud Platform or Azure. So for the Google uh, images, there would be no need to have any Google credentials whatsoever to build the image. There's no need for a dependency on Google to build the image. It can be purely free build. Um, for uploading the image to an account, we would probably want to um, create a sort of service account, which is just like a non-human account basically we can we can sort that out with individual accounts and uh for for the for the uh for the service accounts to upload from the automated build system that would uh it's basically a revocable OAuth kind of secret thing like that tied to some account that it's it, that's easy to solve that's easy to solve so so Kula is watching us, I know, so I'm going to ask him. I'm, I'm asking the question. I'm assuming that he and Noah have been working using FAI, FAI uh, rather than continuing on with Bootstrap VZ. Is that true? Ah, when Zach's just joined as well. So, um, we still have the, or well, the thing that bothers me slightly is that we haven't really made any progress, um, not just on switching over to new tooling, that's something we all, I think we, we all agreed last year we wanted to do, but also um, testing our images um, against the very, very early set of tests that we defined last year. Um, actually, I would like to go back to creating the images because I think we agreed on testing FRI for image creation, but not uh, finally agreed on uh, using FRI for image creation. So if we can make that decision now, um, Bastian told me that he would then directly start working on uh, redoing the image using FAI for Azure. For Azure. Okay. Um, Sorry, I'm typing away and not talking. Uh, 
So Thomas kind of volunteered to me so in, in private, but I'm going to expose him now. <laughs> sorry for stealing all your spoons. This, sorry, this Thomas, serpent, um, to, work, to start working on a test suite. Um, this. So, well volunteered, it's now public. <laughs> and it's recorded and... And now recorded, recorded and live and that's it. it, it absolutely. Hi, so. <laughs> um, do you have any ideas on how to go about it yet? Probably I will use some of my... I will start at least uh, with some of my private scripts that I was using for testing my uh, own packages uh, on uh, AWS. Basically, I'm managing uh, GPU-related Python packages, so I have a set of scripts that uh, runs, uh, inst uh, installs dependencies, uh, runs tests, and so on. So it already tests ability to SSH in and to, to run up install, apt upgrade, and run some GPU tests. It needs to be polished a bit. It needs to probably be made more generic. And it uses Python apt and not apt as in command line, but I guess because uh, behind the scenes they both use uh, common libraries, it should be enough at least for the beginning. Uh, and ideas or objections for this plan? I would be interested in what currently Google uh, or Azure are testing. So what are the real important thing? I think one thing is, does the image boot? But uh, maybe we should get the input from, from the current cloud providers. Um, yeah, so for Azure, we, uh, we test a bunch of things. So we have all our test cases up on um, GitHub. And so the, there's BVTs where we test and make sure that it runs and that the uh, image configuration is correct. And we can do more specialized testing like network performance or uh, InfiniBand and GPU and SROV and all these things that we've added. So uh, some of those can be abstracted. But then, of course, you have the logic, which is probably going to be using the CLI tools for whatever AWS uses. And so there'll be like this, you know, how to spin up an instance and how to add a NIC and all these things. So you have to abstract that out into some kind of framework unless you had some idea on how to do that already. Uh, or what we could do is a short-term thing is we can open up our CI automation for use with official Debian images, which we're building anyway, and just test them. Um, and then you know we can kind of go from there just to know that you have some baseline, that they're at least equivalent to, to what we're publishing today. And um, about uh, testing uh, images, uh, there's, uh, I just added on the um, Gobi document a pointer to a, a work from a French startup that does uh, clouds comparison. Uh, they do some kind of brokering. Uh, and they did some work on co uh, comparing Debian images on various providers. So that's more focused on identifying the differences between providers, but that could be relevant to, to your work. And with regard to Google, I, I, uh, I, of course, won't speak for my former colleagues, but they can speak themselves. At least one of them is on IRC right now. Um, I'll give a quick summary of, so they do run a test suite. The, the actual infrastructure is too tied into their internal systems, but they can probably release, I'm guessing, uh, some uh, dis descriptions of test cases that we might want to apply. Uh, and. Uh, they, they do test a lot. They SSH in, they, they, uh, they SSH in, check various settings, like performance settings, uh, uh, making sure that their integration works nicely. They, they test a lot of things, yeah. Well, from what I remember from the Debian Cloud Sprint and what I also see from the notes we've taken there, we already agreed on, uh, uh, on test the cloud images on, on 20, uh, items yeah. that are there and the test framework is also I think something like eight items or so. So uh, for OpenStack all the test suite is in Debian and the scripts to set it up is in Debian as well. The thing that I would need for it to be run is some hardware. So uh, I already asked for such thing to the DSA but received no reply to my mail. And so, uh, but I, I could I could set that up.
For those who are not looking at IRC, uh, Zach from Google just said, we test platform integration. Number one, any and all metadata interaction. Number two, image configuration is correct. Number three, and new infrastructure changes that may not be released yet. We have some plan to externalize all of this, but it's not quite there yet. That's what he just said. I have a question to Zach. Uh, are there any plans when they like to move to the new tool chain? Maybe you can ask him on IRC. He is watching the live stream. He can hear that. Ah. <laughs> we can't hear him. <laughs> the internet is one way. <laughs> uh, what was I? Grabbing Zach's text out of IRC. I, I think I think the main thing is when when do we as Debian Cloud collectively move to it, and when do we know that it works to produce bootable images and things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. As a side note, I. Run, I tried to run some tests for my packages for compiling on different uh, sizes of Amazon images. Uh, FAI was working. I was just building image locally, so FAI built image uh, on one gigabyte of RAM machine. So that's the second smallest one. I had some in problems with uh, with M uh, T1 or T2 Nano, which mm. the smallest one with slightly below 500 g uh, megabytes of memory. But I don't remember details what were the problems. But still, okay. the, the one gig is not not much required memory. Sure. Okay. Uh, ah, text is moving and I'm losing track. <laughs> um, so, what are we doing next? We want to get tests running on our images, on, for, for all of the platform images. Uh, we have an idea of at least the very basic set of tests that we think should be run for Sanity. Now, from the discussion last year, that was so that we would be happy to call, you know, to at least basic QA so we can start calling things, so we can, can continue calling things official images. You know, we can make sure that anything that doesn't pass those tests never gets published, basically. Um, we can continue adding more and more tests as time goes on, um, as we get more inspiration and, and we find, to be honest, as we find bugs, we should be adding regression tests and all that kind of stuff. Um, what I think could be useful there would be maybe at a future sprint, um, we actually have a bunch of people working on exactly those tests um, and making sure that we can run them. Um, in terms of building things and running tests, obviously the platform providers are building their images at the moment. Um, we're going to be building more images. Um, we had been talking about building them all on central machines and then sharing them out. That has been an ongoing discussion that I know Noah has, was pushing back on. And Kula and I were continuing to push we should be building official images on our hardware um, but we haven't had a real discussion about that again what do people think I think we should build the image yeah, you are there it just takes a second yeah yes I think we should build the images on debian.org hardware um, um, probably uh, at the same moment where we start using FAI for that. So if, um, if we commit to FAI, to FAI repository, we start building more or less automatically based on what's in that Git repository to, sure. to the Debian, on the Debian.org machine. I, I think it's actually OK to build on, on the cloud machines once we actually have reproducible builds for those images. So a little bit into the future. 
and uh, the the work with the, the not cloud related work we done on making the tails ISO image build reproducibly was surprisingly easy. So it's not such a crazy idea like for ten in ten years. It's it could take a few a few weeks maximum to a couple of people who want to do that. You can do it. So Sledge, uh, you're building the images in Bitemark, right? Sorry? Where is physically located the, hard the hardware where the Debian images are built? Right now, today, it is on Pettersen, which is a machine in Sweden. We have a new machine, Casulana, hosted at, shush, hosted in, uh, at Bitemark in the UK, and that is the machine that we're, we're migrating on to. Um, so, you know, that is a really big machine with plenty of scope for lots and lots of VMs, lots and lots of things to run. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, so, uh, is there, will there be some uh, available hardware to do bare, bare metal testing with that image in, in Bitemark or no? no? No hope for that? I don't think so. Well, actually, what, machi what machines do we have at Bite Mark? We have blades and things, don't we? Could we provision a blade for bare metal testing? No. So um, the two-minute synopsis is that Debian likes to, DSA likes to have redundant equipment, redundant partners, redundant yeah. geographies, etc. cetera. Um, so UBC and Bitemark are the two primary locations for many services. UBC was refreshed last year. Uh, Bitemark is getting a little bit old in the tooth and is hurting, so it needs a major refresh. Um, so we're in discussion with HPE about pricing. We're in discussion with Bitemark about their vendor. They use Supermicro white boxes yeah. about getting that equipment. Uh, but there is no capacity at Bitemark really for anything particularly yeah. huge. At least no um, d um, disk um, capacity at the moment because that storage is completely um, f full both I.O. wise and uh, the also, also the disks are quite filled up. Um, I'm not sure about the blades, if the blades are actually fully used. So. And <coughs> so for the Vagrant box, uh, we, are, we want to do builds after that on, on your infrastructure. Yes. So from what I've seen from Marcin, he has started work inside virtual machines. Yeah. So after we switch to FA disk image, we want also to do builds on your infrastructure because yeah. we want probably to expand the number of different builds we do. And we have always an upload step. We're building now six sure. different, uh, for three different hypervisors mm -hmm. on two different releases. And yeah, we want to do continuous integration and we want to upload automatically because we upload that all the builds we do from local laptops and it takes time so the DSL sure. connection is boring. So I hope we can do that afterwards. Yeah. So could we agree today on using FAI because if we have the full agreement of the full team then We could just go f forward and um, start building images using FAI. Yeah, I thought we already had that last year. In fact, no, no we had the, we agreed that we'd try, but we did sure. not. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So definitely, the the next things we should be doing in that case is actually building and testing and validating FAI for all of the platforms. That's the first thing we have to do. Um, we fully expect it to work. There's, you know, there's no magic here. Um, Zach did mention in IRC about 10 minutes ago that he tried briefly, had problems with stretch images that didn't boot. He didn't have much time to debug. I'm sure between us we can we can solve that. You know, 
Um, if we can't, we have worse problems. <laughs> um, if we can make all that work, um, then absolutely, we, you know, that, that's what we should be committing to. Um, we can move to builds on Casulana. That nice big build box that I got for doing CD builds on is about to get busy, isn't it? Um, we can then sort out um, automatic publishing and all of that kind of stuff. We want to get to significantly better CI story than we have today. Um, I think we've all agreed on that. There's also the question of how to organize uh, the builds on Casulana. I mean, is it one VM per provider, one global VM? Uh, what do we use to schedule the builds? Uh, I mean, there's okay. quite a lot of work to sure. do. Uh, one of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, exactly. At the, at the moment, this is all up in the air, definitely. Yeah. So please, discuss. I'm trying to get notes down in Gobby. What, what do you think? Uh, okay. Uh, Returning to the FAI, I was involved with Bootstrap VZ. I tried to run FA FAI. I didn't have problems. As far as I remember, it was easier to start with FAI just to build than, than with Bootstrap VZ. I haven't, I haven't tried to add modules or something like this, so I don't know how, co how complex it will be. So. Uh, so concerning your, your question, Luca, of if we should use just one VM for buildings, the question is, does, can we start FI builds in parallels? I'm not sure if I was, is made in that inside because I suppose he creates, he, ex, he have a hard-coded path to a dev loop device and was not made in that inside, but VMs are cheap. So. No, then there's no hard-coded um, path to, it just uses the next loop device. But there, there was some locking mechanism inside FAIs um, that may be problematic if, there, if we want to run several file disk image processes on one machine. However, the VM isolation layer can be very useful here if we, I, I would suggest that we run each individual build for a single image uh, or single like, a single run of the build tool, even if it produces one or more images, uh, in its own temporary VM that is created and destroyed around that build, because sure. that way there's no detritus to care about, and it's all automated and reproduced, absolutely. somewhat reproducible. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's what we should be trying to do for all of this. I mean, I'll be honest, I've been crap about doing this so far for the OpenStack images and the live images that I'm building on, on the, the central Debian machines. Um, there's always other things to work on. So we have a persistent um, VM that is what, or a set of persistent VMs that I'm using for those builds. Um, it's not beyond the wit of man to fix that and have yeah, generated VMs and then we do the builds in those. It's just, it's just a matter of coding. Um, so, the fun thing that we have at the moment so for the installer images is we're co I said I'm currently building on a host in Sweden and then we're publishing them from the same rack because cdimage.debian.org which is the same as get.debian.org and whatever currently points to storage hosted very um, happily or you know by the folks at the University of Romea um, we, as we move over to building on Casulana, that's a much, much bigger, much, much faster machine. But it's, but we're not. We shouldn't be looking to publish directly from that machine. We'll have to then deal with syncing them over back over to Sweden. That, frankly, we have very fast networking in between them. It shouldn't be an issue. But be aware, there will be a non-zero, you know, a non-negligible amount of time needed for that. We've been talking already in the past about actually having um, some, uh, words failing, English it's gone, about having more than one um, site for publishing so we can actually have some redundancy. Um, that might be something we do in the future. Um, I'm bringing it up now and I don't know why. 
Um, but we may end up syncing images across to multiple different sites, as well as obviously up into the uh, providers, the platform providers as well, uh, for those guys to use. I have a question. Um, the infrastructure to create and boot the VMs where we then want to run five disk image inside. Is there something that you are already using for the CD images that we then enhance or will this be a complete new script or how will a trivial homegrown thing that I wrote on Peterson which will which just runs an existing persistent VM. If we want a some if we want something that will generate on demand and run in a temporary one, ignore that and start again, it'll be easier. So, so this infrastructure has also be written for for the sure. yeah. I mean, Vagrant could, yeah, could be a starting point, but I, f I think it's important to focus on something that can be run outside Casulana as well, because yeah. we might want to be doing a CI build at some point, and we might not sure. be willing to do that exactly. So. Um, the nice thing about having something that, generate, uh, that generates a VM, runs things in it, is we can run that on your laptop just as easily as we can on a central machine. Obviously, we'll want to be running production on the central machine, but if we can get the, t the tooling end-to-end -to, -end to do the right thing, it's more, it's more flexible, it's more useful. You know, we don't want to be tied to that central machine and for initial development. So, and uh, for the VMs, you're using KVM? or yeah. Okay. So, so one idea would be use FAI to create the virtual machines, which then run FAI to create the disk images. That might be more problem, more awkward. Um, do you, you you need root to generate that that VM image, don't you? Yes. Yes. Currently, yes. So explicitly something that we've done for a very long time and the reason why I'm doing live builds and the OpenStack builds in that VM in the first place is so we do not have any any uh, elevated privilege on the build machine itself. DSA are rightly very leery of us having root on those boxes, especially for things running out of cron, uh, you know, and to be honest, especially of course we're pulling out of Git and running it. We don't really want that to be running on, you know, running on the bare hardware. Uh, Zach raised a question on IRC that uh, relate to something we discussed at the sprint uh, last year. Uh, any thought to the fast moving package problem we discussed during the sprint where cloud software needs to be updated at faster rates than traditional Debian packages do? For example, having an edge repository for cloud or something like that, not, not, not necessarily changing what's in stable. I talked to Adam, yes, well, two days ago, and uh, because we want to update uh, Vala in stable, because um, Microsoft recently published uh, Azure Stack, which is essentially new hardware for uh, uh, f uh, f for Azure. Um, and we agreed, uh, I agreed with Adam that I'm going to upload uh, the new uh, Linux Azure agent uh, to stable in the next days. Right, so maybe the, maybe the answer is some clarification or tweak to the policy as applies to this type of thing? Or well, he still wanted to review, sure, but yeah. Uh, fundamentally, yeah. I, so I spoke to the to Adam and the rest and other guys in the release team after the sprint last year, like I promised. And um, of course, they're open to you know things going into stable updates or or however we want, so long as they are so long as they're sane. Right. You, you know, um, we're not. No one is about to give us a catch-all, you know, a wild card to say, oh, of course, if it's a cloud stuff, the cloud thing, you can have it. We, you know, we'll need to convince them. Right, and I agree that Google's current uh, distribution mechanism might not be ideal for that. But yeah. if the policy were welcoming of a slightly retooled distribution mechanism, maybe that would be incentive to them to offer a better deliverable that we could more happily ship. Yeah. Um, the question is, does this also apply to the tool chain? So uh, I think I, I will make some little changes to FAI, which are not then in stable. And I think currently the, the cloud image config uh, on GitHub is not yet an official Debian package. 
I don't think we have a problem with um, uh, with having well uh, services usually run their own software stack. So we just have yeah. that somewhere on on the disk, and uh, so you could easily have your uh, newer version of FAI uh, sure. image create so on so SRV. Yeah, we end up running out of Git typically for quite a lot of the package, not package, but you know, CD building setup the live image building setup and whatever because you know these are fast moving things and obviously they go in the archive too we might not be running exactly the same version as in the archive on any given day um, and as i said the the cloud image config space is there i think it's on on alias but not a debian package currently so that sure. should be also be done okay. Right, I hope people are taking, keeping track of this as well. <laughs> right. Um, so I have a question. Do we have any plans on docker images? That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> um. So as far as I remember, the Docker image are built from two Debian developers, but we never get in touch with them. It's Thiago and I don't remember the name of the other one. Could we, could we ag agree when we do the next cloud meeting, which will maybe happen mid or end of October, um, that we explicitly try to invite one of sure. uh, one or both of them. Yeah, that is exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, did anybody? I'm moving over slightly. Did anybody else, or did anybody actually? So we go to the cloud in it session yesterday. Right. So now, I remember we had discussions about cloud in it quite a lot last year as a, you know, as a tool that we all depend on. And there, were, there was talk about forking and trying to, and, you know, and working and get a load of patches integrated. So the guy presenting yesterday, of course, is the upstream maintainer in Canonical. Um, can anybody give us an update on the, pro, on the on status there? The one thing that I heard of, uh, he talked a lot about cloud config. So another config management thing, there was not that much about cloud in it itself, okay. more about cloud right. config. And and my opinion is, if it's currently working for us, we sh can use it. But if there are major problems, uh, I think most of this, or maybe all of the things that are done inside there can also be done with a uh, Shell script. <laughs> well, they can, just, yes. Just leave it as it is now. <laughs> we do not have problems currently. So I know Waldy was doing, was already doing some work even at the Sprint last year cloud on, on cloud in it. Do you know how, where he, where he so, got to? Uh, so I've been the only person touching that package since. Right. So okay. yes, yeah, it's, it's been six months like I, I did a few QA sure. uploads and so stuff. Where, where are things up to? Are we in sync with the um, Ubuntu folks? Or are we no, not? it's not, it, like it's uh, an old version. We need to uh, upgrade to whatever is okay. the latest upstream. Oh, do so we want? Do we want to follow them as upstream still? So I, I personally just do the things that I think are relevant for my use case. I don't care about the latest upstream for cloud in it. If somebody does, then he can contribute to it, to the package. Uh, okay. As far as I understood yesterday presentation, uh, and as far as I remember the our discussion, our most uh, nagging issue with Cloud Init was that it was stale and it was not updated. And it looks like they started uh, updating since our last, uh, since our sprint, they had. Uh, uh, they had two releases. Uh, they promised to have another one by the end of the year. So, p 
possibly there is something changing, but we will need to see and we'll need to see how uh, how okay. much how much it uh, it, uh, it it is in accordance with our needs. Cool. Are they taking the patches that that we thought that we were talking about that were wanted? No idea yet. Okay. So we need to check uh, on that. Uh, on the other hand, uh, he, I forgot his name, uh, he was showing that uh, they are working on decreasing number of hanging pull requests. Okay. So they might be accepting some, sure. some of new features. Cool. Uh, there's a CloudNet sprint at the end of August. Is anyone going to that? It was That's the first a, I've heard of. A range of, okay. Um, so the uh, from the Azure perspective, we want to cloud it in all the images, but yeah. it is we couldn't get it working, and uh, you know, Bastion threw up his hands and <laughs> couldn't get it working right. in time for stretch. So that's something that we really definitely want. But uh, I think part of it is the patches and getting the packages updated and getting support from probably Canonical. Yeah. Uh, it, if if they have a sprint, definitely. Who wants to volunteer to go? We should definitely get people involved well, if there are changes that we're we going. Uh, I, I think there's folks from different distributions. Probably somebody in Debian is going. Uh, it was a small thing. It's actually hosted at Google, I think. Um, okay. I wasn't sure if it was announced or not. Do you know, do you know where? At Google. A Google. In Seattle. In Seattle. Okay. Yeah. Fine. At the, oh, the Google <laughs> uh, campus. Zach that just, that just mentioned it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. And he said who to talk to to attend, I think. Hi, Zach. Um, Okay, yeah, so uh, that, that would be interesting, but definitely want to bring that up as something Microsoft wants to bring up because uh, better cross-distro support is not something that Canonical has been great at, to be honest, and yeah. they, you know, they're really scratching their own itch, and we understand that, but uh, we definitely need them to, to do more work in that area. Right. And we were about down to about two minutes left on the session. I can feel the video team glaring at the back of my neck right now. Um, so, I have a, a question though about Cloud Init. So the packaging is currently using Git DPM, which I hate, but it's there. Would you mind if I was switching to uh, GPP PQ? Any opposition? Okay. No, oh, okay. No, fine. So, plans. Last thing. Um, we had a really successful sprint last year, uh, hosted by folks at Google. Steve and the Azure team at Microsoft would love to host us for a repeat this year. We briefly talked about dates, and we were thinking, and I've forgotten the dates already, was it 16th to 18th, 18th of October? 16th, yeah, 16th. These are, dates are not yet set in stone, I, I, I assume. Sure. That seems to be the best time for those of us who expressed a preference, at least, that seems to work. So, tentatively, 16th to 18th of October. Which is Monday to So, that's a Monday to Wednesday at um, the Azure offices in Redmond. Um, so, we can you know, have it online as well. Okay, absolutely. So, we can get people involved as well. Um, So one thing we talked uh, about uh, uh, during the uh, sprint we had last year um, was the thing uh, that we want to have an um, image locator. And uh, Martin Behrens thankfully started doing work on that uh, two days ago and showed me a prototype yesterday already, which looked quite nice. So hopefully we um, we'll have something to locate the images, um, in, including CD images, if that's uh, okay, yeah. Steve? I'll let you write something about that in the gobby. I've okay. just been writing about the sprint. Um, fine. I think we're just about, yeah, now we have one minute, so go for that. Do we have anything else that we should talk about right here, right now? Um, as I always do, I will write up the, the notes. I will go through the video of what we have here and send a summary to the list. So especially those people who couldn't be here today have a chance of at least seeing what we've been talking about. Um, 
please argue with me if you think I've mischaracterized or misunderstood anything that, that I send in that mail um, and we will start planning for the sprint. Clearly there's pr plenty of other things here that we can and should be working on as well before we get there. Don't wait for the sprint before, before doing work. <laughs> um, but I would love it if at that sprint we can spend more time th this year actually working on these things rather than we had a really productive, what, four days of discussion last year. Um, you know, more time working on it and doing the plans would be even better. Yeah, okay. Those discussions were needed. Oh, absolutely, they were needed, yes. Um, you know, implementation is good too. <laughs> so, thank you, everybody. I hope that was productive. Um, bye.